Oh, ah, oh, look at all these people here. Hey, great to see all of you. Wow, um, really excited. So uh, I am Ada and I am the Black Carnivore and welcome back to my channel and to this awesome live stream. We try to, you know, mix it up and do lots of different things. So, um, you know, make sure you come back here as often as possible because there's a lot of cool stuff happening. Um, but today, you know, we often have conversation about um, various types of uh, issues that, you know, relate to a carnivore diet. But today I wanted to do something different and really kind of, um, you know, give, give us a fresh start. So I don't know about you, but I've always loved September, you know, beginning of the school year, beginning of new things, fresh notebooks, fresh books, you know, just really excited to learn. So I thought that we'd do something like that today and really go kind of dive deep and go back to basics on a carnivore diet. So, you know, I get a lot of questions about how to do this diet and, um, and I really wanted to provide some information that would be helpful. Now, I, I want to be clear that this is the beginning of the carnivore diet. So this can be the first two weeks, this can be your first uh, month, this can be your first three months, this could be your first year. It's totally up to you. But this is a great place to start. This is gonna launch you towards, um, you know, the best health you uh, you probably, you know, will ever imagine. And then from there, you can decide, you know, how you want to feel, uh, what kind of things you do or don't want to eat, and then, you know, you go from there and you personalize this the way you want. But I think that this is a great place to start, and we are gonna dive right in. So, um, so that's what we're we're gonna talk about. But uh, I want to reintroduce, of course, Arian, who um, is also real knowledge on Instagram. Hey. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so we're gonna have a nice conversation about this tonight. And I'm sure some of you saw the graphics that I shared on uh, Instagram and on Twitter. So, we're gonna go over those, and um, and I will make them available. Uh, and depending, you know, I, I don't know how much interest there is in like really doing like a full on two week challenge or something like that. But if there is interest in doing something that like that, sign up. I put a link in the description and let me know because, um, you know, I will I, I will try to do that and, um, and make it happen if, the, if you all are interested in doing that. OK, so um, let's get started. Um, so, Arian, do you want to say hi? I know I talked right through your introduction. <laughs> 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 that's fine uh yeah just uh hey everybody um glad to be back and thanks for having me all right awesome um and uh so wow we have a ton of people here too so please hit the like button um hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon so that we get you can get notification every time i go live i really do try to stay on top of notifying everybody but um i you know, have definitely missed some days. So you want that little bell icon on so you get notification. Um, okay, and actually, let me just take a quick look through the comments, see if there's, um, you know, any questions or anything like that. Wow, so many people here. Invincible, Black Focus, Ellen Hill, Hey, Seabliss, Mia Dub, uh, Jocelyn, Danny Love, The Broken Prophet, uh, Jace, Hey, Good Morning, Virginia. Um, let's see, and so many, uh, Yes, awesome. Wow, you guys are already having conversation in there. <laughs> there's a whole, yeah, there's a lot we happening. We're old chat friends already. by now, so uh, yeah, we have a, a nice little um, friendship here. Miss Tay D and Esther, hey, um, and Pandemic Carnivore, awesome. And uh, oh, yes, and Pandemic Carnivore reminds me, thank you. Oh my God, we hit one over 1,000 subscribers. Yes on Saturday. Like this is a really, really big deal. In YouTube world, like this is your first milestone and it's pretty awesome. And I only was able to do it with all of you. So I really do want to say thank you. I really appreciate it. And um, we're going to do something to celebrate it very soon. Um, okay, uh, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started now. And if you have questions, uh, you know, put it in the chat. We will, um, you know, we'll try to, to hit things along the way, but we're, we're gonna try to make this as uh, informative as possible. Awesome, wow, so many here. Lakeisha Gatling, awesome, you made it. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna pull up what I think is the first, yeah, here we go. So now you're not able to fully see me or Arian, but that's okay. So, uh, we're not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you can see on um, this 
form, this sheet, we are really trying to make it clear what are the things that you spend more of your diet on, less, and what you want to cut out altogether. So in, you know, in, this, um, in this approach, you want to eat as much meat as you need to to be satisfied. You know, you don't have to gorge yourself. This is not an eating contest. You don't get any points for, you know, eating more steaks. But just, you know, eat as much as you need to to be satisfied and, um, and don't be stingy. Eat any kind of meat you want. So um, I'm going to show you a list of different, well, actually, let me pull that up now. Um, you can eat any kind of, uh, you know, meat that you want to have. So I don't know if you can see this, um, you know, under red meat, you've got ground beef, steak, chuck roast, ribs, oxtails, lamb, goat, venison, bison, all good, any of it. Choose the fattiest cuts you, ha you can, but um, I know, broken profit, yes. <laughs> I moved it to his side. You gotta have my face out there while I'm talking. <laughs> I'm sorry, Arian. Um, <laughs> then, uh, you know, have uh, pork, any kind of pork you want. Pork shoulder, pork chop, ham, pork belly, bacon, sausage, pepperoni, pork rinds. Now, I will say that you want to focus more on the fresh meat. So, you know, pork rinds is not a full meal. That's an accent to a full meal. Pepperoni, also not a full meal. It's an accent too. So if you want to have a pepperoni, um, you know, hamburger or pizza burger type thing, uh, you know, add your pepperoni to it, but don't make pepperoni the main meal. Um, then for poultry, you've got, uh, you know, chicken wings, thighs, legs with the skin. You want the fattiest feet, the food that you can get. Same with the turkeys eggs you want to get um you want to eat eggs of uh, any kind you want to you know make sure that you eat the yolks don't just eat the whites um you know fats butter tallow suet beef tra beef fat trimmings bacon fat ghee lard duck fat all good options whatever you like whatever you have access to and what do you whatever you feel like you you know can cook so um you know when we look back at the more category you see that you know, those are the things that you want to make the base of every meal every day. Um, you know, other things can be served as, a, as an accent, but this is your food. Um, yeah, sea bliss. You like to consider bacon as a condiment. That's right. <laughs> um, plum, you like the fat section. Yes, yes. Um, Do you want to check the question right above that, too? Yeah. So I'm going to come back to the... Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm going to come back to the dairy question. Is that a dairy question, Mrs. White? Um, this uh, sounds a lot like Atkins. Um, yeah, yeah, she's asking why can't I have cream? That's got to be yeah. like heavy cream or half yeah. and half that she's talking about. Yeah. So we're definitely going to come back to it. Um, and uh, so, yeah, let's see. We're going to come back to that. So, but, uh, so eggs, uh, as many as you want, as many as you can afford, whatever. Um, if you have a sensitivity to it, you know, pay attention because eggs is one of those things that people can have a sensitivity to. So if you feel nauseous when you eat eggs or um, if you feel at all unwell, take them out. You can, you can test them later, but, you know, take them out. And then salt. Um, I know a lot of times we talk about eating a lot of salt and I hear and I know people hear us and they say, OK, yes, yes, I'm going to have a lot of salt. And then they do like a little, you know, tap, tap, tap and um, of the salt shaker onto their food. And it's just it's not enough. Nope. So um, you really need to be um, more focused on getting those electrolytes in, especially, especially in the beginning, especially, especially if you have come from a um you know a sad diet but we're going to come back to that so you want to make sure you get the salt and then water drink water to taste not a contest again you know you're not trying to hit 64 120 ounces or anything like that just as much as you're thirsty for uh so that's the more yeah. category less you know coffee herbs and spices doesn't mean you can't have them just don't make them the center they're an accent they make the meal you know maybe more um you know tasty and um, you enjoy them but they're just an accent uh, and not necessarily a requirement coffee um, you know if you have one or two cups a day no big deal if you drink a whole pot like me you know you, you might you might need to roll it back <laughs> so again you've got to pay attention to your own body your own signals and um, that's going to help you 
kind of figure out where coffee fits in your life. Honestly, I did cut coffee for about six months and I did feel, a, a I don't know if I would say dramatic, but a marked difference for me. So I, I do think that I do better without coffee. That being said, you know, I do, um, I enjoy something hot and bitter to drink in the morning. I don't know. It's, it's hard to, to let that go. It's a habit. Totally get it. So I get where you all are coming from. I leave it in because I don't want, you know, you to have to struggle through caffeine headaches. But if you do want to take it out, you know, you may as well. There's no reason not to. All so, right, um, mm -hmm. yeah, go ahead. do you want to, uh, I don't want to get you off your, you're on a roll right now, but like real quick describe like what was the difference that you felt when you um, took the coffee out? Uh, so my sleep was like significantly better. Um, mm. I think even, you know, e even like two cups of coffee by 10 a.m. and no none after, um, it, I, it does affect my sleep. So, you know, I mean, I, I still can sleep, but it's not as bad. It's not as good quality. Mm. So there is that. Oh, there's a the camera go. Yeah. Um, right on cue. So, yeah. <laughs> I see the Broken Prophet said uh, he tried going without coffee and it was the worst three hours of his life. <laughs> totally, get totally get you. Three hours isn't enough, though. Yeah. So, no, I for a coffee lover, I totally get it. So what I would say is we're going to talk about how to deal with a caffeine headache, but, you know, you know we're going to talk about that. Uh <laughs> So, and then uh, we're going to go through the no category. And um, so no, as in no carbohydrates, no grains, no nuts, no sugar, no fruits, no veggies, no artificial sweeteners, no vegetables, a vegetable or seed oils. So, you know, when I talk about carbohydrates, the way I talk about it with people, um, a six pack of beer a bag of cherries, a bag of M&Ms, and a loaf of bread are all sugar. It's all the same thing. It comes in different forms. It looks different, tastes different. You know, some people say, oh, you know, I don't really care for sweets, but drink, a, you know, a, a bottle of wine every night. So they do care for sweets. It's just coming in a different format. So my recommendation is when getting started, you got to take all of that out. Now, you know, in time, some people decide they are okay, you know, doing something that's more keto and eating, you know, some vegetables, incorporating some avocado, some olives, uh, you know, some things like that. Uh, so it's going to be on you to decide where you land with that. Um, but in the beginning, I would say you want to, you want to, you want to dive right in, take the plunge, just get yourself into um, a fat burning state and get you know let your body have the break that it needs to to you know begin to get healthier and be, begin to be able to um you know start to heal your body and re you know reverse some of the metabolic uh you know conditions that many of us have later on then you can decide what you're going to do uh, mm -hmm. i don't think that it's ever going to be helpful to reintroduce grains um nuts sugar uh you know like refined sugar and vegetables or seed oils but you know you got to decide what what's important for you um okay so i talked a lot arian but i know you had some things that you wanted to include um well well there was the, the question about the heavy cream and um right so you all I, notice there's no dairy on the list at all <laughs> yeah and i realized that just now um, no, I, I but, do. <laughs> well, I realized it just now. I, I thought we had it in there somewhere, but I guess so. My thought is the this is the start here diet. So this is equivalent to your uh, the strict side, that left side of the one chart, where we're saying this is how you start. This isn't necessarily where you have to end up, but we want you to start in a really simple healing place and. My guess is um, your thought process is dairy has nothing to do with that and does not belong in that when you're in that stage. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I know uh, we so many of us love cheese, love dairy. I know I get it. I, people fight me on this all the time and I fought myself. Um, but I think that it dairy has like a very significant impact on the body that doesn't just have to do, you know, with carbs. It doesn't just have to do with calories. It is the substance itself that is, 
uh, for, especially for people with autoimmune disease or any kind of inflammation, it is a, it itself is a problem. So if you are doing this diet to heal something, it's not going to help you. It's going to it, it presents an obstacle. If you're you know young, healthy, and you're just trying to tweak stuff to see how healthy you can get, then you know it probably isn't a problem, and it probably is fine. Uh, you know, so it's kind of up to you. But you know. My point isn't that you have to remove dairy entirely forever. I say, you know, remove it for the two weeks or, you know, one month or however long you want to try, then test it and reintroduce and see what happens. Because you don't really know, you know, and I too was like that. When, the, when I heard people say, take out dairy, I was like, no, dairy's fine. Like, I, it's okay. And then, you know, I kind of dillied and dallied and then I finally, finally decide, okay, I'm fully going to try it. And my asthma went away. I mean, that's a really big deal. That's not a little thing. And I realized that I had been saying it was not a problem, but I wasn't really thinking about the full scope of the, the symptoms that uh, dairy had on my body. So I'm saying you will never know until you just do it, you know? And I think a lot of times we want to talk about and look at the evidence, but there isn't any, we just have to do it. And then once we do it, we can say definitively, oh no, it's no big deal. Um, and Arian, you decided to do an experiment and do no dairy. So for the last couple of weeks, so you tell us what happened with you. Uh, so I haven't felt much of a difference. Um, I can say that um, I had a separate issue going on where I think I was under salted and once I fixed that, my body went a lot closer to normal. I think my sinus issues are related to um, my AC, like my air conditioning. I kind of set it, what for me is kind of low, like 76 and then like 74 at night. And then I think it was just running constantly and it was drying out my sinuses. So I turned that up. I feel a lot better that way. I can say though that I've had next to like no digestive issues. And in the past maybe like five days, I brought the heavy cream back in, um, but I'm still not doing any um, any cheese and any yogurt. And I may keep it there. I may, um, yeah, I think I'm done on yogurt. Like I straight up poured out my yogurt yesterday and didn't even feel bad about it. Like, you know, sometimes you throw away food and you're like, oh no, I'm gonna miss you so much. No, that yogurt was straight down to garbage disposal. I did not care. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a gallon of milk in the freezer that I was gonna make yogurt out of. I'm gonna throw that out at some point. You were gonna make yogurt? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, wow. like I had, like I, I discovered, discovered Greek yogurt and went all in on Greek yogurt and um, like, made my own. own. That's pretty impressive. I've done yeah, it it's twice actually... in my life, and both times, it's not a good idea. <laughs> it came out that bad. bad. Yes. Um, I used the Instapot. I mean, this was in the 80s, so, you know, it's not the same kind of equipment you might have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, you didn't have an Instapot at that time. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it came out good, and I could strain it myself, so there was very little whey in it. Um, like, way less whey than, I think, the yogurt that comes from the store. But, like... I just, the lack of digestive problems and the lack of worrying about eating too much has been very nice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, I, you know, I mean, I think for that reason alone, like really paying attention to how your body responds to dairy is, is important. And it doesn't take that long. I mean, I think it took me like two weeks and or maybe 10 days i think is when i um had some cheese and i was able to see it and then i tested over the course of another week um and uh you know i was hopeful because i had a lot of cheese that i had already bought and really didn't want this to be a problem but mm -hmm. you know i uh i tested and it just it was clear so so yeah. all I'm saying is not forever, not for all time. Nothing is forever. All I'm saying is start here and then you can figure out where you want to go. Now I see Jimmy Zero Carb says he's been doing carnivore since 220, lost 81 pounds as of today. Woo, yes. 
but your weight has been the same for the past two weeks in my opinion on why that is so you know a stall is when you stay the same weight for four weeks and and you have not lost any inches in that same four week period so you might not see a difference on the scale, but there's stuff going on. So I would say I don't have enough information to say that you're actually stalled and you might still be losing fat. And that's important. Um, okay. Uh, let's yeah. See. Like the, the scale is always going to be fickle and you can't trust it alone. You have to be thinking about the rest of your health and your, um, especially when you start losing body fat, but building muscle, you got to be looking at, your measurements. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just scanning through the, um, you know, so through the chat to see other questions. You know, definitely see conversation about heavy whipping cream. Um, yeah, so I know, Mrs. White, I totally understand. I get it, but you know, I would say take a break. Now, on this list, um, now if we're if we go back to the grocery list, um, I and let's see. Can I say one thing about the heavy whipping cream real quick? Yeah. I, I think that if you're going to do it, you should be very careful about doing too much. Like, yeah. Like, stick to maybe, like, I think what I'm going to do, because um, I just want to see if it's affecting uh, my weight loss and my body composition at all, is instead of, um, and I'm going to admit, I stole this from Ken Berry and Nisha. They just did a video where this came up. They are saying that they want to just actually measure out a tablespoon, an actual tablespoon of heavy, whip, heavy whipping cream, and that's all they put into a cup of coffee, as opposed to just turning the carton over until you it looks right. like it's enough, which is probably way past what you needed. Yeah. So I think that is a great point. Um, you know, for some things that are high energy, now we, you know, we're not here, we don't talk about counting calories. <laughs> Um, you know, as I said at the bottom of the start here thing, eat one hungry, stop one full. So I'm not suggesting that you count calories, but you know, there is such a thing as calories and you do want to, you don't need a whole lot of excess energy. Um, you know, some excess energy is not, not a big deal, but you know, if you, um, sorry, Arian, here we go. <laughs> um, no, cause you, broken profit is making fun of me. So now I want to, I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, um, if you, uh, I know our, our faces are so beautiful. We, they should be shining through all the time, but I want to make sure everyone gets to see all of this. Um, so, but when we're talking about fats, you want to eat, um, it, it's okay to eat them, but don't go, don't go crazy with it. And it is super easy to find yourself eating, you know, three or four tablespoons of, you know, added ghee or butter to your coffee. And that, you know, ends up being a lot of extra energy that you may or may not, you know, actually be able to burn off. So, um, you know, so I, I would recommend, um, if you must have coffee that is not black, um, if you do use an immersion blender or some kind of blender with a coffee and any kind of fat, um, but you know, butter is particularly tasty, it will turn it that lighter color and it will, you know, be delightful. But like I said, you know, I would recommend do one cup of that and then the rest of your coffee black, if you're going to have more than one cup. Um, but you know, you, you're going to play around for yourself. Um, and some, for some people, you know, a rendered fat is going to be a challenge, but anyway, so you can see through the rest of this grocery list, just buy the food that you enjoy the most. Um, this way of eating is about enjoying your food. Uh, you know, you got to let go of that old mindset. Like when you were eating high carb, um, low fat, low calorie, it was virtuous to not enjoy your meals. So you were always working to make dry chicken breast and you know dry vegetables somehow enticing but that's not the case here you don't have to do that if it tastes good it is good so you know if you fry your chicken wings in lard if you eat your um you know your steak with a fatty cut um if you um well, I love chuck roast. So if you cook up your chuck roast with all the fat, it's good. If you make oxtails, it's good. You can eat the fat. It can be fatty. 
don't look for the lean, leanest stuff. Um, and then I'll just quickly go through on beverages, black coffee, black, uh, black or herbal tea, water, still or sparkling, lemon juice, don't cook crazy, but you can put a splash of it in your water if you like that, bone broth if you like that. Some people like that in the morning. If you like to have something um, warm in the morning and don't want coffee, um, having bone broth can be a nice thing. And if it's already got fat in it, like if you've made it yourself and you had marrow bones in it, it can be quite fatty and that can be also very filling and tasty. Condiments are okay. Um, mustard, just make sure there's no sugar in it. Hot sauce, like, you know, I make buffalo sauce all the time. That's good. Um, herbs and spices, just check the herbs and spices to make sure it's just herbs and spices and not dextrose and flour and MSG and salt and, and a whole bunch of other stuff because usually, um, you know, they, they hide sugar in those things. Uh, salt and pepper, of course. So like I said, sugar-free, read all the labels, nothing sweet, avoid sweet taste, just keep it plain and just let yourself get used to this way of eating. Um, and then, uh, let's see, I didn't go over the fish. So fish, any kind, shrimp, scallops, crab, lobster, oysters, bass, sa salmon, cod, mackerel, sardines, all the others that you can think of. Fish can be kind of lean. So, um, you know, I would uh, make sure that you add some fats. Um, but, uh, Aaron, can you keep going, <laughs> keep going through that? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Dog, be quiet. Please keep going through it. Well, wait. Oh, okay. So, um, now I got to remember what you were talking about. Oh, the, uh, the fish. So yeah, fish is always going to be super lean. Um, the only fish I've ever had that wasn't was salmon. Salmon's the only fish that's ever any sort of satisfying for me. So, um, it's recommended that you fry the fish in butter or bacon fat, something that's going to fortify that fish so that it actually is more satisfying and that you're getting the fat that you need along with the protein. Um, if you do need to bread the fish, then you can get, uh, you can either get, or you can make pork rind. Um, what do you call them? Like crumbles or something? Uh, panko or yeah, it's like flour. So you yeah. can, um, yeah, you can buy it or you can make it yourself. So, so yeah, uh, and I never do that. When to... I make fish, I just bake it. But yeah, I mean, it's, it, you know, it's tasty. I mean, it's just an alternative. You don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm actually going to make salmon croquettes, I think, for breakfast tomorrow. So looking forward to that. Mm. Oh, good stuff. Yeah. So I'll use the, the panko and um, salmon. Uh, okay, so those are all good options. So you can take this grocery list with you. Um, you can print it out and just... Each week, circle what you want to take, what you want to buy, and when you get to the store and discover what you had intended to have isn't there, you can switch it up and figure out something else. <laughs> but you got a lot to choose from. And you'll notice when you go in the grocery store, you have no need to go into any of the aisles. You're just going to the meat aisle, the fish aisle, and then um, around to the egg and dairy area where you will pick up butter or uh, eggs. So very, very small, you know, area of the supermarket that you're even trying to hit. Um, so let's quickly, uh, yeah, Plum says it's a meat-based elimination diet. Yes, exactly, exactly. And someone had asked if this was, how this was different from Atkins. Uh, you know, in my opinion, it's not. You know, I thought Atkins, I mean, Atkins allowed you some cheese. It was, although it was limited, definitely. Uh, but yeah, you know, Atkins, the start of Atkins was, it was a good diet. There wasn't anything wrong with that. Yeah. Um, somebody asks, ZZ Captain asks, if you can turn up your mic a little bit. Oh, me? Yeah. Let's see. Um, I don't know. How about that? Did that help? I can't hear any difference, but maybe they can. Oh, I see what the problem is. How about now? Test it um, again. Uh, so let me know get now, guys. Can you hear any better? Um, well, how about yeah. you, Arian? Can you hear any better? I, I heard you fine the first time, so I wonder if it's what's going out to them. Because to me, you still sound the same. Yeah. Well, I did change. My microphone got messed up, so I, I did change my mic. Oh. Uh, and then... So... Uh... Oh, no. Wait a minute. <laughs> 
<laughs> and Virginia says, I might be too loud. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Can you all hear me now? Just speak up and let me or put it in the um, in the chat. But I'm going to turn up the gain on my microphone. I don't know. I still got to figure this stuff out. I don't always feel like I quite get what I'm supposed to be doing with it. Um, okay. So let's see. Yes, Seabless. I see the gleam on Arian's teeth. Nice. Uh, yeah. So Ellen says cheese. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, well, like, you know, this, we, I, so I certainly understand the value of looking good. So any way of eating that um, enhances our looks, you know, all good with me. Good idea. <laughs> um, okay, so Ellen says she seems to bloat you now. Um, and the Broken Prophet says it hurts less when we don't even mention cheese. I've deleted it from my vocab. Excellent. Love that idea. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's see. Then the next thing we wanted to talk about were some of the common problems and the common solutions. So let me pull that up. Oh. Um... Yeah, here we go. Oh, and while we're here, can everybody please hit the like button, um, subscribe, and uh, hit the little bell icon? Yes, please. Um, there was a question about grass-fed versus grain. Yes. Uh, okay. So, uh, do you want to cover that, or shall I? Uh, yeah, I can do it really quickly. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. eat, okay. eat what you eat, what you want, and can't afford. Okay. Yeah, that was super quick. Um, if you, yeah, if you have the ability and you want to try grass fed, you know, give it a try. I, you know, my feeling is we have so many more meals on this planet. So, you know, there's no reason to choose one or the other. You can get what you can afford, what you have access to. Um, there, you know, I, I do think that, um, you know, choosing regenerative farming is, uh, offers better benefits for the earth and certainly the healthier the animal you're eating you know, the healthier it is for you. Um, you know, eating a sick animal isn't necessarily great. Um, but you know, you got to do what you can do, what you have access to. And when you can do more and, and do different, you can, but just starting here is going to take you so much further in your health. And then from there, you can decide what you want to do. Um, let's see. Pandemic carnivore says, uh, sorry, Esther. Uh, I do have to say that cheese might stall your progress, at least in the beginning and see if the dial moves. Yeah. Cheese, mm -hmm. um, definitely, uh, a common cause of stalls. Um, so Siebel says I go through dairy phases. I'll be on it for a while and then I'll go a few weeks without it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Black Passport Fit says, uh, at Jimmy Zero Carbs, don't focus on the scale. Love that. Exactly. Exactly. And that is not yeah. just for Jimmy. That's for everybody. We all get way too hung up on a uh, number without looking to see how good we look. And I like to tell people, you know, only you knows what that number looks like on the scale, but everybody can see exactly how tight your pants are. So that's what matters, <laughs> not the number that's on the scale. Um... And, you know, and remember those winters where, you know, you just were determined not to buy a new coat, even though you had grown out of yours from the winter before. And so you zipped it up only part way or you were cold and you didn't close it. Let's not do that to ourselves, you know, just accept like we're going to get the clothes that we need to fit into. And um, we're going to work on getting the direction we, we want to go, but we're not going to focus on the scale. Um, a black focus threw away cake. Yes, that's good. Yes. I like that. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, so let's dive right into um, the common problems and solutions. So, you know, the most common symptoms that I saw uh, or I tend to see with people is, you know, headache, fatigue, brain fog, weakness, and constipation. So, um, so a lot of that is usually salt. Uh, you know, like I said, I know, you know, some, some people are more sensitive to salt than others. So I'm not saying, I, I'm not giving you an absolute value of how much you need to have. Some people, um, you know, require a tablespoon, maybe more per day, and other people don't need quite as much. 
and what you know what time of year it is how, what you have been doing how sweaty you've gotten whether you've worked out what you ate all of these things will impact how much you need from day to day so i can't say you know how much you need um you're just gonna have to uh you know you're gonna have to like practice with it and see and see what what happens but not having enough generally causes headaches fatigue you might feel like your your body weighs a thousand pounds you might um and you might feel weak uh and constipation is you know another possible um you know side effect of not getting enough salt the um quickest thing you can do to rectify that is take like a pinch of salt a thickest pinch and put it underneath your tongue and let it just dissolve underneath your tongue that there is a big uh, blood vessel there that's pretty close to the surface of your skin and so anything you let dissolve there it tends to um, get dissolved and go straight into your blood system uh, your bloodstream so if you really need something you know to, to act quickly it will act quicker that way than if you swallow it and it has to go through your digestive system but you know an ounce of prevention is worth the pound of cure so if you start to feel bad from not getting enough salt it takes a while to kind of feel better again so uh, you know my recommendation would be to really try to stay on top of it i do have a list of and things that you should buy and that includes you know uh, some electrolyte drops and salt so that you have that and carry it with you they're you know it they come in small little little pocket sized things so you can have it in your pocket or your purse you must have salt on your person at all times because the stuff hits when it hits and if you don't have it you know you're just you know out of luck and that that salt under the tongue thing like i i really was not trying to believe you at first i had heard you say that and i had already been carnivore for a while so i was thinking like i knew like just about everything and there's been a few times where i tried it and it like it's like really within like 20 minutes mm -hmm. like you almost instantly feel the difference and then you go oh oh so i was under salted mm-hmm yeah yeah um and you know the drops like i like to put the drops in every glass of uh of sparkling water that i have it just gives it more flavor and it tastes good to me and if it tastes good to you i mean that's a sign that your body wants it if it tastes too salty to you then it's too much but what tastes too salty to me and what tastes too salty to you and what tastes too salty to arian is going to be different and that's fine you know you want to your body is very good at figuring out what it needs so all you have to do is listen to the signals there's no other work to do just listen and it will speak loud and clear um so the other thing is brain fog um brain fog is another symptom now that can happen uh you know there's a couple of things going on one you're switching from running off of sugar to running off of body fat but uh your body doesn't get good at running off of body fat instantly you know it takes time it's been running off sugar for you know two three four five six decades so it you know it takes time to ramp up and in that time you are not giving it enough sugar and it can't get enough fat so you're having an energy crisis and you're just going to be tired so my recommendation is this is not a good time to take up a new workout routine uh don't try to run a marathon you know this is a good time to relax and just kind of learn how to eat this way and you know kind of give your body a shot to to do this um but one thing that can happen is like you know your brain fog like your brain needs you know it needs energy to operate and so if you're not eating enough you can kind of feel that way um so my recommendation is make sure you get enough salt and um and then you know um and kind of just give it some time uh so should we move on to the next one are there some questions in here uh um, Esther's going to bible study all right good to, we'll see you tomorrow and glad to have you yeah absolutely um and let's see what we've got here headache fatigue brain fog weakness constipation no i think you hit them all okay um Okay, so do you, well, let me do the next one and you'll do the stomach one. So, okay. um, so the next set of things that we often see is irritable, cranky, and hangry. Um, you know, again, these are mood things and this really is usually about the energy. So like I said, you know, you've got to have 
your, you know, your body needs energy to run on. And a, a lot of what can happen when you're eating this way is, um, you know, we're so used to when we're eating uh, carbohydrates, having our, our appetite stoked constantly. So you're constantly hungry or eating or wanting to eat or thinking about the next meal or planning the next meal. And what can happen is that, you know, you just are um, constantly wanting to eat. And so you, when we eat this way, suddenly all of that's turned off. And what I, the other thing that I see is people just aren't hungry and it's like, oh wow, you know, this is awesome. But what ends up happening is that they're so not hungry that they're not actually eating enough. And we do need energy. You know, this is the whole purpose of eating is to get, you know, some calories and to get some, um, you know, nutrients and vitamins and stuff like that. And so if you're not eating, you're not actually getting what you need. So my recommendation is to um, eat, you know, just eat. <laughs> and often when we're having cravings for, um, for something sweet and you have cravings and you want to eat something, you know, that's usually like an energy problem. And that's why eating fat at that point in time can be really helpful. Because like I said, if your body's not good at um, extracting your body fat, it can do a slightly better job of getting, you know, using the fat that is, um, it, it can do a better job of using the fat that you're eating. So if you're having those cravings and you really want something sweet, eat some bacon. Eat some bacon. By God, eat more bacon. Yeah. Um, eat something fatty. You know, eat oxtails. Whatever it is that you have, but have something fatty because that's that's really the problem. Um, and there are a lot of different signs of hunger too. That we, you know, when you're eating, um, you know, regular carb diet, you don't, you know, you don't really know what hunger is. Um, it's so we think it's a stomach growling and that's hunger but really it can be being irritable cranky angry um if somebody says to you uh you know do you need a nap that you know that's a sign you're probably hungry and people around you are not liking your behavior so <laughs> yeah go eat yeah. something like yeah eat something and it's okay to eat yeah and that like and instead of going for a snack, go for some actual food, like a full thing of food, and oh, eat excellent. until you're yes. eat until you're full. Yeah. So no snacks. I, you know, I, I'm just not a really, I, I you know, I'm definitely not encouraging snacks. So mm -hmm. if you feel hungry and like you want to nibble on something, go have a meal. That's it. And if there's something that you want to eat. You know, if you're not hungry at that moment, you can always eat it with the next meal. It's totally okay. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next one. You take that one, Arian. All right, so um, I got to get to the YouTube so I can see the chart. Yeah, so if you're experiencing... Um, these are the symptoms that uh, are normally symptomatic of low stomach acid. So... If you're having gas pain, if you're bloating, if you're feeling cramps, um, if you're having diarrhea, also sometimes constipation, but um, I feel like more often it's diarrhea. If you're having um, like like bouts of burping, not just one or two burps after you ate, like literally you swallowed food and then within the next couple minutes, a burp or two comes up, but like you are burping and burping and burping um, often for like could be hours uh, you most likely have low stomach acid and uh, I have a list of other things too but no I think we hit them all oh also uh, heartburn we probably should add that to this chart but um oh, okay yeah um so yeah like well, all of I those things heartburn often resolves when you remove sugar pretty quickly uh it depends if it's if you're having low stomach acid, then um, the uh, the the sphincter at between the esophagus and the stomach isn't going to close up, and then you'll still be burping. Um, that's actually what causes the burping too is the same low stomach acid. So then, like that burp can either just be a burp or it can be a burp with acid, which now is going to be giving you heartburn. Yeah, it's not fun. Yeah. Um, and Ada gave me this one because I've experienced it before. Like I, I have straight up like burped up stomach acid and food into my mouth again. It's it's horrible. 
Like your whole. So wait, how is that not just throwing up? Well, because I don't like I'm not emptying the whole contents of my stomach. It's not going bit, out of my mouth. Yeah, well, yeah, but. Well, <laughs> okay, well, I guess. Right? No, no, no. It, it's close though. You're right. <laughs> like it's it's not far off. <laughs> so, yeah, it's bad. Like the whole all of this burns all the way down to the stomach and then like the mouth just tastes nasty afterwards because you just had partially digested food and acid in there yeah yeah not good (laughs) i'm sorry that sounds awful right but you're laughing so (laughs) i know i'm sorry and i i mean and i do understand like my mom went through just like jars and jars of gaviscon um, and, and after she passed, like, you know, I sort of inherited her stuff and like, there were just jars like this big of Gaviscon, which is like one of those things for heartburn. I don't know. I mean, I, oh, I so like an antacid. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. and it came in liquid form, tablet form. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, while we're on the topic, don't take antacids like mm-hmm. ever. Don't take them. Your, your stomach is supposed to be acidic. Um, so mm-hmm. it, the ways to so we, we've got here as a solution HCO which means stomach acid and what we're saying there is your stomach acid is a problem you have to resolve your stomach acid issue now there are ways to do that without supplementing your stomach acid and ways to do it with supplementing so I'm going to start with the without so you can um, eat smaller meals you can refrain from drinking around your meals. So that means like for at least probably about a half hour before a meal and definitely a half hour after, don't drink anything. Or if you really feel the need to drink, do a very small amount. Sip it, sip it slow, small amounts. Um, Also eating less fat in your meals may help and increasing the salt that you have, which is the first solution of, but yeah, like, because salt is definitely a component of stomach acid and it's needed for you for your body to um, create enough acid to cover your meals. The reason that the smaller meals and the less fat works is that they will require you to need less stomach acid. So maybe the amount that your body is already producing will be enough if you just have less fat or smaller meals at a time and maybe just eat more often. The no drinking with meals is kind of that the stuff that you drink is going to, at least to some extent, dilute the stomach acid that your body is creating. So again, we're trying to do the most with the stomach acid that you do have. Uh, The other solution is to straight up supplement your stomach acid. If you're gonna do that, then you need to buy HCL with pepsin. I recommend getting uh, pills that are at least like 500 milligrams if you're doing, if you're getting smaller ones, then that just means that you may find relief a little slower because the way you're gonna do this is you're gonna start with just one pill right after a high protein meal. Now you're carnivore or you're starting carnivore, so every meal that you eat is gonna be high protein. You should experience hopefully some relief with that one pill, but you're gonna keep going. So the next meal, the next meal, you're gonna do two pills and you're gonna keep increasing the dosage with each meal that you have until you get to the point of feeling like my stomach feels warm. At that point, you know that you have, you are just one pill over the dosage that you need. So then you're gonna go back to the old dosage, whatever was whatever you did for the meal before, and you're gonna stick with that until someday eventually but for me it happened very quickly it happened within probably two weeks i'd say probably like a week and a half um what was a good dosage will now start to feel like too much and you'll get that warm stomach feeling again so then you need to drop down again and you're going to keep going through that process until you either spontaneously feel like i don't need this stuff at all or you just drop down from one pill to zero pills and you have solved your stomach acid problem at that point Excellent, man. You know, I so I didn't do any of that in the beginning, but, um, you know, I kind of regret that. Uh, you know, they, in the, the carnivore community, there are, are jokes like, um, you know, never trust a fart. Um, 
you know, it's, it's real. Like that can be an issue in the beginning. And I think that one, I was trying to eat too much food at one time. And, uh, and that was a problem for me and rendered fat was a problem for me in the beginning. Over time, I've definitely come to be able to eat more liquid fat. So when I say rendered fat, that means, you know, like when you're cooking hamburger or whatever, all the fat that um, becomes liquid outside of the, the ground beef, that's rendered fat. So when I would try to eat that or even butter, you know, melted butter is rendered fat as well. When I would try to eat a lot of that, it would, um, you know, upset my stomach quite significantly. So, um, you, you know, and you'll notice like it's not subtle, so you'll know if you hit that mark and then you'll not do that again. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, so uh, I, you know, I feel like if I had tried the HCL, you know, perhaps I might have, you know, might not have had that problem. And, uh, so there's, there's one thing from the chat that I wanted to deal with. Um, I think it was Evelyn said something about ACV it helps low stomach acid. So I would actually say that ACV doesn't help. It helps some of these symptoms. So, so wait, what is ACV? Okay, you're right. ACV is apple cider vinegar. So uh, it's a pretty strong acid. It's not, I don't believe it's as strong as our actual stomach acid, but it's up there. Um, it will definitely, it'll help your heartburn because it'll give you more acid in your stomach and then the acid is what tells that sphincter between the stomach and the esophagus to actually close up. So now closed, you're not going to be burping. You're not going to have the heartburn. Okay, that's great. ACV does not replace stomach acid, though. So it's not going to actually digest your food. And that's the issue with that. Like it, it can be it, it, it almost it feels to me like it's a band aid on the problem. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I, I know a lot of people lean into ACV, but, um, you know, if you can sort of resolve the problem quicker and more effectively, you know, why not? Um, yeah, I, I think sometimes we treat ACV like it's magic and it doesn't solve everything. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so you, you might try, I, you know, I, well, Arian, can you tell us like, when would it be appropriate to go and buy HCL? And when would you just decide, okay, I'm not going to drink liquids before or during my meals, and I'm going to eat smaller meals and eat more often? Like, wh how would you decide between those behavioral changes versus just buying the supplement? So um, I can only say, or the I feel like the best I can do is to, give my reasoning. So I did use HCL um, and it, it worked like a champ. I started with the not drinking and the smaller meals. Smaller meals weren't working for me because they weren't satisfying. I don't wanna, that's just, I was already keto by that point and that wasn't how I like to eat. So that was kind of, I tried to do it, it just really wasn't working for me. Like it, because you also have to think about while you're doing this, the point isn't to just be unhappy. Unhappiness is not a goal. And right. it's, it sounds weird, but it's a thing we have to say sometimes. So like, as you think about this stuff, also think about which would actually, um, which would get you to the happiness that you can sustain and be okay with. So for me, eating small meals was not gonna do it. Um, eating less protein was not gonna do it. I wanted, I knew what my body wanted. I just needed my body to be able to handle it. So after I stopped um, drinking anything around my meals and I still wasn't resolved, I immediately went to, all right, this isn't working. What do I need to do? There's some HCO. All right. I drove like that next day to the vitamin shop and bought a big ass bottle of it and started using it. So is there any danger to taking HCL if perhaps you don't need it? Um, if you start, if you do the protocol that I just described, then no. Okay, the so worst if you that, pay attention to that warmth, like there isn't any real danger to having that warmth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It'll just mean, all right, you've got a whole lot of stomach acid. You'll feel it. You'll know. It'll be uncomfortable. You'll feel like, oh, I need to burp, but I can't. 
or um, my stomach, just my, my abdomen feels hot. And then you, you know you don't need it. But that's why you start at one pill. You should not be just, oh, I, I really feel I like I don't handful. have enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like five at a time and hope this works. Like, no, 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 no. Don't, don't do that. Okay. Start at one and gradually go up and you will find where your limit is. The only way that you could even do more than that would be if you had somehow gotten some tests that found out exactly how much stomach acid you were making and exactly how much you needed for each meal. I don't even know if that's possible. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. Um, yeah, so I feel like if you want- that we would know, like, you know, I mean, if the, the judgment is based off of people who are um, carb eaters, like their stomach acid is not where ours is, so. Right, like there's entirely too many variables. So the, the way I think about it is if you want instant relief, if you're just really tired of this issue, um, if you're having the, um, if you're in that can't trust the fart stage and it's really depressing you or you can't get out of it, then like, I, I'd say probably go for the HCO along yeah. with the other things. Still do, still do everything, but maybe then go straight to the HCO versus yeah. if it's just kind of a bothersome problem and it's not, but it's not, uh, I don't know, it's not severe, then start with the other ones, start with the non supplemental solutions. If it's still not being resolved, then go for the HCO <laughs> supplement. So, you know, that's why I recommend just buy it, you know, because I, it's, you know, I, if you have enough money, just buy it because it's it's far easier to just have it and be able to make that decision than not have it. Um, yeah, it's not that expensive. And honestly, like when you know what low stomach acid feels like, you may reach times where in your carnivore journey where you've already been carnivore and you felt like, oh, I stabilized and everything. And then you cheat and you realize oh, I'm back to low stomach acid again. And you may yeah. need the pills then. Yeah, there is that too. Um, okay. So Angel Life says her carnivore husband takes a teaspoon of baking soda and a glass of water. Um, Why? So I've definitely, no, for a heartburn, I've definitely, I know that people do that, but I think that lowers mm -hmm. the acid not um raises it um so yeah i don't know it, it it's a bad idea you got to resolve the actual heartburn um that baking soda is just <sighs> there's a lot of better ways to resolve like one you want to resolve the root cause of the issue and I don't know. I don't think so. It's a bad idea. Yeah. So limiting the, the beverages before and during meals is interesting. Like my grandmother was just hyper vigilant about that. I was allowed to have one drink. I had to drink it very slowly. There's never any explanation as to why it's bad to drink during meals. But that's mm -hmm. what I was, you know, drummed into my head. So when I heard it, you know, for, for carnivore, I was like, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> totally get that um but you know for some of you might you might not be used to that so i don't know uh but it's good let's see um so i will say that there are less common um symptoms that can happen during um you know during the early stages of getting used to the carnivore diet and i would say for those just um you know reach out to me so i am doing coaching so you can reach out to me for uh you know a consultation and we can kind of walk through and tweak whatever is going on with you and kind of figure out solutions um you know there are unco less common things that happen um you know that also you know don't necessarily indicate a problem but they're just you know sort of less common and we weren't able to sum them up uh here but the most basic things that are an issue is people not having enough salt that not eating enough and having low stomach acid and that is the majority of the problems um so let's see and let me pull up the final form which is let's see Nope, that's not it. I should probably 
properly name <laughs> these things. Here we go. Buy this. Yes, what to buy. So um, I did see someone asked about electrolyte drops. If I use keto chow, yes, I lose, use the keto chow drops. Like them very much. Having a great time with them. Um, probably the next uh, ones that I will buy will be different. You know, I just want to try different stuff, see what's out there. You know, I haven't tried other stuff, but it's nice to have it all pre-mixed and I can just add it to water and it's super easy, but you don't have to do that. If you just want to add salt, that's okay. Um, you know, salt is really helpful. Well, uh, you know, it, figuring out, like, I, I really, uh, you know, I don't really like to get into trying to, to balance the, you know, potassium and calcium and chloride and um, salt and, you know, well, there's five electrolytes, so, and magnesium and something else. So I prefer not to have to get into that, but, um, you know, so it, it, many say the best thing to do is just focus on getting enough salt and your body will preserve, absorb and preserve the other electrolytes so that um, you, you will have them in the correct proportions. But it's the salt that is the lever. So make mm -hmm. sure you get enough salt. That being said, some people do get leg cramps. It's, it's you know, a common uh, occurrence. Um, so when that happens, typically magnesium is what is recommended to have. Um, so in my Amazon store, um, I have a, a, a section called electrolytes and I put in some recommendations for magnesium. I, you know, I would suggest to try that magnesium calm is one that people talk about all the time and seem to, you know, do quite well with. Again, it's one of those things you may never need it, but if you wake up at two in the morning with crippling cramps, you don't want to not have it. You want to have it in the cupboard. It doesn't go bad, so just have it. Um, and another option is Epsom salt. So magnesium can easily be absorbed through the skin. So if you don't want to take it, it does, you know, it doesn't taste great. Um, you can soak your feet in it or get in a bathtub uh, of Epsom salts. And um, then you're doing double duty. You are getting relaxed, calm, and giving yourself some much needed me time, as well as getting your magnesium. And you can make a, they call it like a, jeez, uh, I can't remember, like a syrup or something, but it's really not oil. that, but it is, An oil. yeah, oil, oil, right, sorry. <laughs> It's thicker than water, and my We're mind like, just no gets sugar, syrup for but some reason. Yeah, use syrups. <laughs> Magnesium Make body syrup. Yeah, syrups. That's a yeah. thing. Yeah, but <laughs> it's just basically a ton of Epsom salt and water. I think it's a. I forget the ratio now, but it's easy to look up. Do you remember? No. Okay, so whatever the ratio is, it's somewhere. It's either one to one, or it's like twice as much Epsom salt as. No, it's one to one. I think it's whatever will dissolve into the oil. So whatever doesn't Basically, dissolve is yeah. not going to be in it. Yeah, you mix that up and you put it on your body just like you would um, anything else. And yeah, that, it works. It, it does, like, it dries white and dusty, so that's weird. Mm. Okay. So, uh, well, you know, either way, do you take Epsom salt baths ever or no? No. Um, I think early. we were in a Zoom and someone talked about uh, Epsom salt for magnesium and I figured, oh, so that means I could see what this magnesium thing is all about without even having to do much because I already have Epsom salt, mm -hmm. even though I don't use it. It's yeah. just one of those things that I just figured I was supposed to have. And you can also, you know, take Epsom salts as long as it's not... Um, lavender or eucalyptus flavored or anything like that. If it's just straight up plain food grade Epsom salt, I have also used that um, as well. Now, uh, it, it, it depending on how much you take, it can function as a laxative, so be careful, don't go wild with it, but like a half a teaspoon after you have eaten a full meal, you want to take it on a, on a full stomach, um, it can be, it can also work and be helpful as your supplement. So, you know, this is an area I feel like, um, you know, I still adjust and kind of, you know, I'm figuring out what works for me. So um, you want to, to tread carefully, but the electrolyte drops is fine and salt is fine. Magnesium, if you're feeling like you're having cramps, adding that is fine. Um, 
and then you know i i'm not encouraging that you start playing around with potassium you know potassium is one of those things that needs to be in um, the correct proportion and it can be a problem if it gets out of balance but if you go to the doctor and you're tested and it's discovered that you are out of balance then of course you should you know take it as you have been instructed um yeah and that's why I, I like that you're saying like you know have the supplements but you don't necessarily have to get them and start using all of them immediately like just let them be there for when you decide that you need them because really your goal is you should be you should at some point eventually be able to have everything you need just from what you're eating mm -hmm. and yeah that's the idea like you know, we shouldn't really need other stuff. Um, and, you know, a lot of times I think that people, you know, get this notion that we need supplements and we need vitamins because the food that we eat is not nutritious, but that is not true. And when you actually look at the, you know, the vitamins and minerals in animal products and you line them up next to plant products, you know, the animal products are full of these vitamins and minerals. And even if, you know, you take like three ounces of broccoli and compare it to three ounces of beef and the broccoli has, you know, a higher concentration of something, you know, we're eating two pounds of beef in a day. So we're getting it all. There's no question that we're getting it all. So you don't have to feel like there is something missing that you're not getting from the broccoli, you know, that, that the broccoli would provide more of. Um, and in fact, I would say, you know, if you eat two pounds of broccoli versus two pounds of beef, you're going to have a very different life experience. So, uh, <laughs> much yeah. different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So feel confident that the foods that you're choosing and, and, you know, this is an, again, another one of those reasons why, you know, you want to choose the highest quality food you have access to, but you know, um, you meat is good. It's good for us. Uh, okay, so the next thing I have is a glucose ketone meter. So I recommend testing your blood glucose in the morning and testing your ketones. So testing your blood glucose can give you a sense of where you are. And if you are returning around your insulin resistance or your prediabetes or diabetes, you know, the main thing that we are concerned about here and that, that faces our community is um, metabolic syndrome. And so um, those are the things that, that face our community and those are the things that lead to chronic in inflammation that go on to lead to the, the diseases like diabetes, heart disease, stroke, and cancer. And those are the, you know, 80% of the, you know, the things that are killing us. So, you know, we want to focus on, um, on, on improving our health and and uh, and the way and one of the ways to monitor that is to look at your blood glucose, your fasting blood glucose, and you want to see it coming down. So you, you've got to have a baseline of where you are, and then it's a great way of also testing foods. You know, a lot of times people argue with me about whether there is a reaction or they have a reaction to food, but you can actually just test. You don't have to ask anybody. You know, uh, it doesn't have to be so subjective. If you test your blood sugar before you eat. Then you eat the item, then you test your blood sugar every 30 minutes afterwards for another two hours. If your blood sugar comes back down to baseline by two hours after eating that thing, you're okay. But if it's still not down, then you know that that food is really triggering you and it's, you know, dragging up your insulin. And, um, you know, having your insulin really high um, or having, you know, very high blood sugar is is a problem. It's it is damaging immediately in that moment every single time we're doing it. So I don't know. Just to scare you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, if you get the a glucose and ketone meter, you can keep track of these markers for yourself and kind of understand where you are. Now, um, if you go to Fora Fora Care. Um, they and you use my code the black carnivore you get 10 percent off and um, you can buy the blood uh, the blood glucose and ketone testing kit um, so that's an option and then uh, i have the digestive aids there so we talked about hcl we did not well, talk about ox bile real quick on the glucose ketone meter we are not chasing ketones right 
Like yes. it's not it's good to be in ketosis. Don't get obsessive about that thing. It can become another scale, like a, a I'm checking my weight all the time. I'm checking my ketones all the time. No, that's not what it's for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, you, as long as you're in ketosis, like, then it's fine. doesn't really matter. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's talk about, um, let's talk about the digestive aid. So we, uh, we didn't mention ox bile. Now, what would that be for? So... I I tried to read up on this before this show to really decide what I was going to say about Oxbile, and I'm still, I'm uncertain enough that I would say I would not recommend people buy it. Um, mm-hmm. it it's used um, by your body to emulsify the fat that you eat, but it seems to only be an issue for folks who um, a lot of times have like gallbladder gallbladder problems or like it's been removed Mm -hmm. um so i guess like there could be a time where you need to have the uh ox bile i feel like it's so much less common though than the low stomach acid and the low stomach acid is actually going to solve most people's digestive problems that i i don't think i would recommend people just off the top by ox bile Mm -hmm. okay so, uh, you know, so that is something to consider. Depends on, uh, you know, your situation and whether you have, um, you know, whether you're having difficulty uh, um, <laughs> digesting fats. I know I got to figure out how to fix that, too. Uh, so, so I have it on here. I think, and what I wrote was to check with, uh, check with me for a recommendation of what and how much to get before you actually buy it. So that's what I would say, you know, again, if you do a consultation, that would be, you know, the best way to sort of deal with that. Um, Oh, and Errol says, uh, FSA can pay for, um, meters as well. Yeah, that's totally true. But the meter itself is pretty cheap. It's the, um, ketone sticks that you actually put the blood on that like are worth their weight in gold. So, you know, I got to do my reimbursement. So, yeah um so i also have a book section uh in um you know in the amazon store that you might want to take out take a look at it's always you know nice to uh check that sort of stuff out um and then under supplements i have l-tyrosine so if you are going to quit coffee um one of the things that can happen is caffeine headaches and uh l-tyrosine really is very very effective in um, removing, um, or alleviating the headaches. So that would be my recommendation for like a week, just, um, in the morning on an empty stomach before breakfast and then on empty stomach before lunch, have a thousand milligrams of L-tyrosine. And that usually knocks out the headache. And then, you know, by a week's time, you should be, um, you know, you should be good. Somebody asked what FSA was. Is that, um, the, I don't know, federal flexible spending account. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, okay. And then there were a couple of questions in the chat that I, uh, I made a note of Mrs. White said something about salt, but I missed the question. So if somebody can repost that large oh, picture yeah. asked about the black Panther and, um, you know, the actor who played the black Panther and what was going on with him. So, you know, my thoughts about that, we, we discussed this a bit too in the Facebook group is, you know, we, we really don't know, you know, what was, what was going on with him, the choices that he, you know, that he made, what were, what was really happening. Um, so I don't know that it makes sense for us to speculate about him specifically. However, we did have Dr. Tanya come and speak to us at one point. She is a radiation on, no, uh, yeah, radiation oncologist. I think and, so. Yeah, and also a breast cancer survivor and uh, also a keto success story and, and also a stroke survivor. She had a lot of things going on. Mm. Um, but anyway, she spoke to us and, uh, you know, one of the points that she was making is that cancer is a disease that's caused by inflama- chronic inflammation. So chronic inflammation causes damage to our mitochondria and that uh, leads to... Um, you know, cancer cells that, you know, proliferate. And, uh, you know, and the other thing that she, I think that she had mentioned this was that, 
you know, you're, I mean, we get cancerous cells all the time and, um, you know, it, it just happens in the body, but your immune system kind of deals with them. But when we're like chronically inflamed, not only we're we producing them, but our immune system is also engaged with dealing with the inflammation. And so these, these things that could otherwise be, have been held, handled and dealt with are, um, become, uh, you know, just too overwhelming and, um, you know, we, we lose the battle against them. So, you know, thinking about that, it, it made me understand that, you know, the, the key ways, if you uh, believe, you know, that, that research to prevent cancer is to reverse the, you know, the, the five signs of metabolic syndrome, which are the things that lead to those chronic conditions of inflammation. So those signs of, uh, metabolic syndrome or, um, abdominal fat, um, low HDL, high, um, blood glucose, obesity. Um, oh God. <laughs> uh, low HDL. Mm-hmm. Uh, high blood pressure. Um, let's see. I can never remember all five of them. Normally I, I get the four. I can't even get four this time. I know. Obesity, blood pressure, oh, low right. HDL. What the? Mm. Okay, wait. I've got it. I've got it. Here we go. Can you see that? Yes. Okay, so a metabolic syndrome, abdominal obesity, high blood pressure, high triglycerides, low HDL, high blood sugar. So, yes. How did yeah. we forget high blood sugar? I don't know. So having three out of five of, of those five is what constitutes having metabolic syndrome. So, and, uh, so you want to reverse that. Um, and that's, you know, really that's the most important thing. So to me, you know, that's, uh, I, worrying about whether going vegan caused or, you know, was, uh, a part of, you know, uh, um, the actor's particular cancer situation. I don't know, but I think, um, what, you know, we need to do is kind of focus on the things that we know. And there is absolute research that shows that, you know, these, these symptoms of metabolic syndrome increase significantly increase our risk for cancer and not a little bit, not like, Oh, you know, maybe 1%, 3%, I'm talking 50% higher risk. So this is what we need to deal with. And, um, and that's why we are trying to, you know, figure out this way of eating and make it super easy for people to do. Yeah. So, um, I do know, I looked this up yesterday that he, has not been vegan for a very long time. He said, well, he's not vegan, or he wasn't vegan. He was almost vegan, he called it. But um, he, when he was getting into the physical shape to play Black Panther, um, he was not vegetarian at that time, which Did says to me- Did he have cancer at that time too? Well, like he, during, they said he at some point diagnosed. during the filming of the movie, I mean, but God, I don't, how hard is that? You're like trying to do a good job and then boom, you get the, you know. Yeah. I mean, I'd have to, I wonder when Black Panther started filming or we'll waste too much time with me looking that up. But yeah, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Fact checking would be the death of this show. But I think that he definitely, um, he most likely, or I'm pretty sure he had the cancer and was diagnosed with it. Um, so he knew he had it while he was shooting Black Panther. So yeah, it was like he was getting surgeries and treatments, um, during this prolific run of all these movies. Um, but yeah, we don't know enough to say, I mean, we could never say, oh, this person made their diet. They did this to their diet and it caused them to get this disease. I wouldn't want to do that anyway. That feels in very poor taste. Um, yeah. But yeah, our our good friend Tony Hampton just made a video um, recently about Chadwick Boseman and that he, um, it wasn't really about him specifically, but it used him as a launching point towards talking about this specific thing, diet, mm -hmm. getting your diet under control, um, going to a low carb diet so that you can prevent cancer. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, I had intended to say this. So Dr. Tanya is coming back to our live on September 8th. I think that's a Tuesday. So tune in live. And um, she was just absolutely fascinating. Um, a lot of the stuff that she had mentioned when we spoke to her was so, um, so helpful for me. And, you know, as many of you know, my mom passed from cancer earlier this year. And, um, it was just really helpful to understand, you know, what cancer is. Cause I feel like, you know, for many of us, it just seems like this awful devastating thing that just happens. Um, but in fact, you know, there may be some things that we can do. And so it was really helpful to hear about, to hear from someone about the research that, um, there is and, uh, you know, and, and what we can do. So, uh, so I encourage you all to be there. Uh, mm -hmm. and then, so I found Mrs. White's question was about um, the effect that the salt has on blood pressure. So if you have been diagnosed with high blood pressure, you are going to have to monitor your blood pressure, which of course you should be doing already, right? Um, maybe. Uh, have, have a machine at home and be monitoring it. You're going to have to pay attention to how you feel and whether you need to have more salt. What happens, this, di this diet is very, very diuretic. So in the beginning of starting to eat this way, when you eat carbs, carbs come with water. So when you eat carbs, you're holding a lot of water in your body. Mm -hmm. And then we keep talking about inflammation and reducing inflammation. Well, inflammation is water being held in your body. So as you eat this way and reduce inflammation, that water is coming out. So you're going to be... Like for me, I always know if I've been off keto and I get back into it, the first thing I notice is that I'm peeing for like three days straight, just constantly. And that's just all that inflammation that's coming out. So where goes water, so goes salt. So if you're peeing a whole lot, you're also losing a lot of electrolytes. And that is why we have all of this problem and need so much salt in the beginning. Even later on, once you've been following carnivore for a while, and you know you your your need for salt does reduce because you're not ex excreting a more liquid uh so much more liquid um you know you're sort of even um but in the beginning you're going to be dropping so much that you're going to feel that you need this so if your p blood pressure is very high you might find that it drops very quickly and so um, we didn't say this, um, but of course we should have said this at the very beginning. We're not doctors. This is, does not constitute medical advice. If you are on medication for blood pressure, or if you are on medication for diabetes, you have to talk to your doctor because they are the ones that, um, can adjust your medication. Your me medication is going to need to be adjusted very quickly. Yes. Um, you know, if you're uh, taking diabetic medication, that stuff needs to be adjusted within days or weeks. It's very quick. So it's not, you know, something that's going to happen over time, days or weeks. So you have to deal with them. And blood pressure, same thing. If you're taking diuretics or if you're taking other stuff, you might find that you feel like you stand up and you feel lightheaded and like you're, you know, going to fall out that is, you know, your blood pressure being too low because of the lack of salt or and combination of not having enough of your medication. So, um, or please. having too much of the medication now because your need for it has decreased. Right, exactly. So please, you have to deal with your doctor. And I know, you know, going to your doctor and talking about, you know, eating this way or or whatever you have to, you know, talk to them about can be difficult and frustrating. And not every health professional is willing to be your partner uh, on doing stuff like this. But you know, you got to think about, you know, you got to think about it like um, they're your, you know, they they're your partner in health. Um, you pay them to help you. If they're not willing to help you, you have to find another health professional to do it. But um, you know, it's your health. Nobody gets sick for you. Nobody is going to die for you. Only you. So mm -hmm. you have to make the decision that um, you're going to do the things that that are going to make you healthy. Yeah. Okay. And it's actually, it's not really the salt that's causing your high blood pressure problem in the first place. It's like you said, it's the inflammation, it's the uh, way too many carbohydrates, it's the insulin, it's all the things that come from the rest of what you're eating. Salt is not the problem. 
but yeah, you do have to be careful. Yeah. So, um, I hope that that answered your question, large picture, and, um, I'm sure, you know, we'll continue to discuss it. I mean, it was pretty stunning. You know, the, the actor was, um, so young and so vibrant. It's, you know, upsetting. Uh, it really is. Yeah. And he had like, just with black, black Panther had like just reached a level of, kind of everyone knowing what he who he was and him becoming like a hero like when you play like he is the black superhero so when you play um that character we're expecting you to be that for a long time um and it's it's sad like i'm seeing people talk about having to like tell their kids that you're not going to see him play black panther anymore that sounds horrible Yes, that is. So, um, and then finally on this list um, is, uh, so meat. Um, so if you're interested in getting grass-fed, um, pastured, or uh, ed grass-finished meat um, that is regeneratively grown or raised, you can go to Bell Campo. And um, if you use my code, um, my name, 8A10 at Bell Campo, you can get 10% off of your order. So um, I would definitely check that out if you're interested. And, you know, it's always helpful to have a place that you can order from and, and see, you know, what you like and all of that. Um, so those are, I think that's kind of it. That's the recommendation. Um, of how you get started on this. And I think we went into a lot of um, science as well, um, but this is how you start. So, you know, two weeks of this, you know, preferably a month, but at least two weeks, and then you can start to, you know, experiment with whatever you might wanna do, but start here. So are there any more questions? Tell me what else you might want to know. I'm thinking of buying some suet from that Bel Campo place. Mm -hmm. Since I haven't been able to find suet anywhere and I've been feeling lately, I don't know if this is just uh, my body changing as its composition changes, but like I feel like I want way more fat now than I did maybe two months ago. And I don't want, um, sometimes I don't even want that fat with protein. Like I told you the other day, like I just kind of, I had bacon, eggs, and uh, marrow. So most of that meal was fat and it was delicious. It lasted a long time. I don't feel like I want like heavy protein anymore. Like mm -hmm. lean meat just doesn't sound fun at all. Yeah. You know, I, hey, I'm on the fat train. Yes. <laughs> Load it up. Fat. Yum. Right. Yum. Um, you know, I don't know. Uh, yeah. I agree. Get it. Try it. I, you know, I don't really like suet that much, but, you know, I do. I mean, I do eat it. I just don't, you know, I think I prefer beef fat trimmings, but, you know, get what you can get. I mean, if I could find a place good. for trimmings, oh, you know what I need to do? I need to go well, to that place. Well, I did ask, I the... asked the woman at Bel Campo um, about getting beef fat trimmings because she was kind of like, you know, do, do people want that? And I was like, yes. How do you I not know. know that? Well, her customers are more than carnivores. I think that's the oh. issue. Yeah. So um, she was like, huh. And, um, but I said, yeah, I would buy that. So please. So, you know, keep looking. They may actually put that out there. Um, oh yeah, that'd be great because hopefully that would be cheaper than the suet. Yeah, hopefully. Um, let's see. Oh, and Plum asked about hypoglycemics get sick with blood sh blood sugar. How do they transition? Um, I've had you know people ask about that. I mean, t it tends to be that eating low carb helps stabilize because you're not eating the things that are driving you up and down. But you might find in the very very beginning it might. Um, you know, it might be a little bit hard, but I don't know. What are your thoughts, Aaron? Arian? So I would expect, um, I, 
I always mean to look up like what exactly causes hypoglycemia. Um, but I imagine so the carnivore diet or any good keto diet um, stabilizes your blood sugar. So I would think that you would have less of the symptoms of hypoglycemia because your your blood glucose is just staying right in that normal range all the time. Like I can say for mine, now that I've got the meter, I can actually check it. I think the lowest I've ever gone was like 77. The highest I've ever gone was like 95 or three. Like it's never anything crazy. Um, I don't know how how low does it have to get to be hypoglycemia? I assume it's pretty low. I don't think so. I mean, if you don't have ketones, no, it doesn't have to be all that low. But I think what happens is that you, um, you know, your, your blood sugar, well, your blood sugar can go very high and then insulin, your body releases an excessive amount of insulin to deal with it and it drives it really low. And that's, you know, what's happening with uh, hypoglycemia. So, and low could be, you know, 60 if you're, if you have no ketones, we can get down to 60 with ketones and it's not a problem, but for someone who doesn't have ketones, it's going to be a problem. Um, but if you're removing the all sweet things, you're not eating the things that are going to drive it up and down. If you're concerned in the beginning, I would say, you know, eat smaller meals and eat more often. I know we mm -hmm. say don't eat that often, you know, eat only three meals, but if you need to, it's fine, you know, eat five small meals a day, you know, eat a little bit throughout the day if you're worried about it happening. But, you know, once you can get beyond that, you're probably not going to experience it. But I will say that, like, I've heard Jimmy Moore, you know, talk about having hypoglycemia for a long time after going keto and even after going carnivore. So I think it's possible if you are very metabolically damaged and still struggling with insulin resistance that you would continue to have hypoglycemia into um, this way of eating. But continuing to eat sugar is not going to heal it. It's only going to lead you worse, it worse astray. So the only solution is still this. It just means maybe you eat more often um, and you try to be more aware of the, you know, those things happening. Yeah, like that's what I would expect, that anything, any way of life that further regulates your insulin so that you're not having spikes um, would be very beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, I also think this is a thing that I started using on people because uh, Ken Berry does it like this is the human diet, not necessarily carnivore, but low carb animal base. So it's not bad for anybody. Yeah. Um, so, hey, living life now. She just had some suet tonight. Yes. Good um, stuff. And, yeah, yeah. And I know I owe you an email, so I'm going to get to it. Um, and Mia says, uh, oh, can you emphasize the 30-day beef salt water challenge for this month? We started today. Yes, and some may not know about it. So, uh, you know, some of the folks in our group decided to do a beef salt water challenge and, um, and you know, and to, to stay focused and to really stay strict for the month of September. So I do want to reiterate, I think it's a fine way to eat. If you want to eat just beef, salt, and water, that's totally fine, but it's not required. So if you feel like that is too restrictive for you, you don't need to do it. Um, it's just, you know, a fun thing to do. And I, um, most months eat, you know, mostly like 98% beef anyway. Um, so for me, it's like, oh yeah, it's too pretty sick. easy. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but, you know, for some people, like, it's, it's too restrictive, especially in the beginning when you're, you know, there's just so much to get used to. So if you don't feel like you're up to doing it, don't worry about it. Don't do it. Um, but if you would like to join, come on in. We just started today. Beef, salt, and water. And um, let me know because um, I will, if you don't have the, the downloaded calendar so you can cross off the days and each week, you know, mark your, your weight, your waist circumference, your blood glucose, your ketones and stuff like that. So we can, um, also more accurately track our progress. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So yeah, people like tallow. It's good, good, good stuff. Yeah. Um, I think out of the two, I like tallow more. I like suet for something different though, because of the different texture, but I don't know if like 
I would just eat suet all the time if I like if I had to choose one, I would choose tallow. And I guess well oh, really so you like it well, rendered. No, no, no. I was just gonna make that point. So really it's not suet versus tallow. We're talking suet versus whatever we call just plain beef fat. Because either one rendered becomes tallow, right? Yes. But it's different. So like I've gotten tallow that's made specifically exclusively from suet. And then I've had yeah. tallow that's just made from whatever. And, you know, we, I mean, we're only using two words, like beef fat and then ta and suet. But it could be like, you know, there's beef fat from the back versus beef fat from the belly, you know, and from the ribs and from different parts of the body. And they all do have different flavors and taste. Yeah. So we're kind of lumping them together. But, you know, like they, they are different. Yeah, like I started noticing um, I had a, a rack of lamb and then a ribeye and in both of them, the fat once it like the fat that melted and then re solidified felt more like suet mm -hmm. than some of the other fat that I've had off of animals. I, I would definitely agree there is a difference in texture from tallow made from suet versus tallow made from the other stuff. Yeah. So I wonder if even in those regular cuts of meat that we don't think of, if, at least I don't think of them having suet. Like I always, I always thought suet was just around the organs, but it appears that, yeah, the fat is different everywhere and maybe some of it does taste more like tallow, even if it's not from an organ. Mm-hmm. Well, some of it does taste like other kinds of beef fat versus um, suet. Yeah. So, I, you know, I, I mean, I, I perhaps my my palate has become more sophisticated from uh, eating <laughs> this way, but I definitely notice a difference in flavor between, let's say, eating marrow versus eating suet versus eating um, the fat on a short rib versus the fat on an oxtail, you know, yeah. all of this is coming from the same animal, but it does taste different. So, Oh yeah, totally different. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the, the fat in a, the fat cap on a ribeye is like soft and just kind of like that melt in your mouth soft. And then there were other parts of fat from the same steak of ribeye that tasted a little bit suety. And then there's marrow, and I feel like, and then there's suet, which is like the waxiest out of all of them that I've had so far. Yeah. I've often talked about, you know, <laughs> somehow creating carnivore chewing gum. Um, it would be so suet. Not, yeah. <laughs> so, but, you know, it gets all in your teeth, like it's a whole thing. You know, you got to, you know, go to the restroom afterwards and like floss well, and but see if you just if you just kept one of these everywhere that you go <laughs> not not in public I don't do that. just keep it right here no, but no. don't start doing no. that on our live stream <laughs> <laughs> i really thought about it just I, to fuck just to mess with you <laughs> i know but you know we we're all friends here and like family but um there's family and there's family <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so we've answered a, a bunch of questions. Is there anything else that, um, let's see. Uh, so Living Life Now asks, do you think it makes a difference if suet is grass fed? I've read that most toxins are stored in the animal fat. Donuts, um, the animal fat, it's best to purchase suet from grass fed animals. Um, I don't know why the word donuts is in there, but I think it's pertinent because yes, the donut that you ate years ago is stored as your fat so um when you eat fat from an animal all the stuff and whatever they ate that was toxic is stored in the fat so yes you know that would be the argument for why some people say eating regenerative eating grass-fed is a better uh better option um however i don't know that it's enough to make a difference though uh, or, or a big enough difference i'll say i don't know I mean, I kind of feel like, especially when you're losing weight, you know, you're also going through your own toxic fat. You know, what we're doing when we're losing weight is using our own fat for energy. So we're eating for dinner, we're having, you know, our thighs, which is that, you know, half dozen donuts that we ate, like, you know, a couple of years ago. So 
you know, there's a lot of toxin running through on through us. And I don't know, it may be that while you're losing weight, you do need to focus a little bit better, um, more on eating quality fat. And I definitely feel like I see a difference for myself in terms of eating beef. You know, when I was losing, it was really important for me to eat, um, more higher quality saturated fats. So I don't know. Yeah. It, it may be individual because for me, mm -hmm. um, everything was grain fed until I did eventually switch to grass fed for a while. I found a CSA that I could buy meat from and it didn't make any difference for me. Well, I'm talking about this fat specifically. So, you know, I would get grocery, you know, meat from the grocery store, but for me, finding suet, I mean, like, that's not easy to do anyway. So I ended up buying fat from, like, you know, these fancy places. And so it did come grass-fed. Um, so I don't know. I mean, it might be something that you need to experiment with and see how you do. But what I'm saying is the only fat that I had was coming from the meat. Mm -hmm. And it was regular grocery store meat. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, but then maybe it was slowing something down. I don't know. Um, I've also seen stuff or seen people theorize that with at least with ruminant animals, um, they are because what they're they're eating the grass and then it's being processed not by them but by bacteria, and then they spit it up, chew it again swallow it into a different part of the um, body where it's being fermented like it's going through so much processing inside their body that a lot of that stuff that we would worry about is not ending up in the animal mm -hmm. versus if you were to eat say um, a pig or a chicken mm -hmm. okay um, I just, just a theory question. yeah I just put up a question uh, from Lucy. She says, hi, I've been listening to you for a while and getting so much information as I can, but I'm afraid of this diet and its effect on uterine fibroids. Does this diet make them worse? So, you know, I think that that is something, I'm trying to remember if I've run across women who have talked about this specifically. Um, I, so I have not had, um, I've had assists on uh, my ovaries, and I have not found that this diet made a specific difference um, in that case, you know, either way. Um, I know that there has been some research to suggest that endometriosis is made worse by, um, by eating red meat. Again, you know, I have endometriosis, and I did not find it to have a difference one way or the other. Um, so with fibroids, you know, I would assume you also, you're, I mean, these are, you know, hormonal things that are going on. So anything that is going to help you have better control of your hormones is going to be helpful. And, um, so that's something to consider. And also remember, uh, you know, like the, these conditions can cause excessive bleeding, which causes, um, anemia. And I've been walking around anemic for so many years of my life. So when I finally, like it became so bad, I finally, um, went ahead and, uh, you know, started eating with a cast iron pan and eating, you know, red meat and liver. Like I finally started to find some relief. So, um, you know, I'm not sure that I can answer that question, but I know that some of the side effects of those symptoms, you know, make living life a lot harder. So being anemic is, you know, it's not easy. So, um, there you go. Um, yeah. Yeah. Everything. Um, I, I have a slight, small experience, indirect experience with fibroids. And as far as I know, um, one of the big theoretical causes is hormone imbalances, like you said. So yeah, anything that regulates the hormones, such as a low carb diet, where now you're not having insulin um, chronically high, so then your other hormones can get back in balance because insulin counter regulates a lot of hormones, especially the sex hormones, I would think would improve the conditions that are associated with hormone imbalance. Yeah. 
But, you know, my experience, too, was that, you know, these are conditions that take years to develop and um, and also years to reverse, which, you know, you may not have that time, you know, before you hit menopause and whatnot. So, um, you know, I guess I felt like they're just well one is so little research at all on women's mm-hmm. conditions so i didn't get a lot of guidance in you know in that area and i've kind of had to make my own way um jackie everstein who was a dr atkins nurse for um i guess 30 years has done has actually done uh i've seen her do a bunch of talks about women um and menopause and hormones. So I would take a look at her research uh, or her talks and see what, you know, what she's had to say that has been really, um, you know, really helpful. And I see Mia has said that she has seen testimonials of fibroids disappearing on this way of eating. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I wish that there were more research to, you know, to guide you, but, um, I don't know that there is. Um, yeah okay. all i can say is um <laughs> kind of the same thing again like i highly doubt that it would hurt your fibroid condition that it would make it worse yeah so um <laughs> zz captain says do you look at your stomach as your second brain as i do um they do say that the gut is is actually um, our second brain, and perhaps our first brain. The this one up here is the second one. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, yes. I I never know what that means. So the gut is the second brain. Okay, what what is that? It directs a lot of our behavior um, by uh, you know the the stuff that it produces. Oh oh, then yeah. Yeah, I the way that someone um, explained it and one thing I watched that I really liked was that um, the subconscious is the body. It's the body talking and it's performing a whole lot of actions that you are not consciously thinking about and you're not supposed to consciously think about them. Um, And yeah, it makes perfect sense that the gut would be a big part of that. Like the gut is... (sighs) <sighs> the immune system, the nervous system, it's mm-hmm. kind of everything. Yeah. So, I mean, I you know, people talk a lot about probiotics and the gut, and I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't really feel confident that enough is known about the gut to make some of the statements Not at all. people make. So... You know, I listen and it's like, okay, that's, you know, interesting, but I I don't feel yet like I'm willing to make a lot of, you know, changes that have anything, you know, to do with supplements that you purchase, you know, maybe food that you eat, but like when you start talking about buy this probiotic and that, it's just kind of like, yeah, like that's where it gets really frustrating to me to, um, see people talk, um, like they know things when really like the human body is so so complex biology is so complex you you don't know and yeah especially with the gut stuff like to think that you can catalog everything in there and say oh well this person doesn't have a enough diversity of um bacteria in their gut so that's why they're unhealthy um and oh, this thing here, it's so, like you said, it's always a product and this product will fix it if you just take these and they cost $50 a bottle. Yeah. And there's two pills. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. right. Like, sure. no, no. I don't, I don't believe any of that. I also, I don't believe that we were meant to be like hacked. Like, when you're doing what you're supposed to do, your body will reward you it'll do what you want it to do yeah yeah uh i see carnivore mystic says commercial meat is more estrogen 
Estro I think that means estrogenic than regenerative meat, and cruciferous vegetables are highly more estrogenic than all meat. Something to consider. Yeah, I mean, you know, certainly estrogen that. is, um, you know, one of the hormones that you're uh, uh, hoping to have balanced, and um, these foods can, uh, you know, can knock that balance out. And in fact, oh man, uh, this guy did this really great research about um, how estrogenic our environment is like all the plastic that that we're exposed to is also estrogenic not not just for women but also for men so like the instance of men having well i guess what are effectively moves. Called, yeah man boobs moves, <laughs> um that you know even at normal weight that that is that really is a sign of the level of estrogen that is in their system and um you know so it's a problem for sure. And it's more of a problem. It's a problem for everybody. So, uh, you know, the less of that, that we can eat, the better. And that is a good reason. I know I, you know, I'm one of those people who's like, ah, you know, whatever meat, but like, yes, there are sometimes there are good reasons to choose, um, regenerative, uh, grass fed, grass finished meat, because, you know, if those things are, if you're very sensitive to those things, you know, which perhaps we all are, like, that's a good reason to try to, uh, you know, to change, um, to eat them, to not eat them, sorry, to, to get yeah. away from the, you know, commercial stuff. Yeah, and and that's kind of where, like, the, the plastic specifically is another place where carnivore becomes, like, a lifestyle. It's, mm -hmm. for me at least, it's more than just food. It's trying to get my body my and my life to um, a pretty natural place. You know, as yeah. much as is comfortable and reasonable in modern society. Yeah. So yeah, like I got rid of all my plastic Tupperware. I don't use it anymore. I don't heat up anything in the Tupperware that I do have. It's all glass. I take the top off if I'm going to heat something up. I try to stay away from that crap. Yeah, I try not to microwave in, in plastic. The most upsetting thing for me was glitter. I love glitter, <laughs> but it's really, really bad for the environment. It never goes away. And, you know, and it's in like, like facial stuff and, you know, or micro beads and stuff like that. All super, super, super bad. So, mm. yeah. Did not know that. It makes yeah. sense, though. Like, yeah. why would glitter biodegrade? Yeah, it does not. And it's made of plastic. So it's just forever mm. floating around. Um, okay. So uh, let's see. Cardboard Mystic says over 70% of the nervous system is actually in the gut. Yes. Um, and it's the vagus nerve that travels it. from the brain to the gut. Yeah. Pandemic carnivore says it's the largest nerve in the human body. Yeah. That's another thing I need to research more. I think I'm so focused on like diseases and how they work that I haven't just done foundation, foundational research on the body. Yeah. How does the body work when it's working well? I don't right. Know. Yeah. I, I never get here. Right, but I can tell you all kinds of stuff about diabetes and insulin resistance. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lucy C says she's struggling with chocolate and sugar cravings. Yeah. So I would suggest checking out our first brown sugar roundtable where we talked about that. But yeah, I mean, you know, we all, we do struggle with it and um, there's a lot of things going on. But is it the longer, the more days you can string together, not having anything sweet, the more that will fade. So, and, there you go. Yeah. And I like this point that uh, Carnivore Mystic is saying that um, if we're healthier on our natural human diet, then other animals are healthier on their natural diet and therefore better for us. And yes. I, I was literally just explaining this to a friend of mine um, about regenerative meat. Like, I don't really, and I think this might be why, like a lot of people aren't really satisfied with grass-fed meat because animals, cows don't eat simply grass. If you look at regenerative um, branches, they won't have just grass, but like other things will sprout up, flowers and other plants, clover and stuff that all taste different and have different nutrient profiles. So then the cow is getting its actual complete diet, which isn't just plain old grass. The cow is being moved around all the time like they would when, if, uh, you know, hundreds of years ago, 
they were just living on a pasture where there was also predators, where they had to get off the herd, would have to move away from the predators from time to time. Um, mm-hmm. It makes perfect sense to me that when I've heard people say, like, no, regenerative meat is what tastes good. Grass-fed is just, eh, but regenerative is where it at. That makes perfect sense, because that's our closest, as of now, approximation to how that animal lived in the wild and what it ate in the wild. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, totally agree. I've not had um, a whole lot of it, but, you know, I think it, it, that makes a lot of sense. Now, uh, ZZ Captain raises something I thought was interesting. So, um, he says grain fed animals, um, uh, well, the meat is lacking in omega threes. So I supplement with sardines. Um, and he's saying that to carnivore mystic now. So that is a difference that people cite between grass fed and, um, regular, uh, supermarket meat. However, I really question whether that is something that matters. Um, Mm -hmm. So there is a difference between how much omega threes are in it, but it's not a huge difference. Um, You know, if you really care about getting a lot of omega threes, then you need to get your sardines because you're just not going to get a lot from, you know, beef, whether it's grass fed or not. But I also question whether we need it. You know, when you're eating a lot of omega sixes, then you need a lot of omega three to readjust that ratio. But mm-hmm. when you're eating carnivore and you're not consuming omega-6, you're just getting what's in the meat, you you know, that ratio is now no longer a problem. And I don't know what the absolute number of, uh, you know, milligrams of omega-3 you need to eat in a day. Um, but if you hit that, then, you know, is there a benefit to eating more or, you know? So I, I don't know. I mean, for me, I kind of feel like, you know, I, I don't know that there is a need to supplement once you remove all of the excess omega-6. Yeah, that's exactly everything that I have. All my research or all my reading of other people's research has shown that it the ratio is more important than the absolute number. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Um but pandemic carnivore says uh, at ZZ Captain sardines are very good. I eat them too. Yeah, if you like them, absolutely eat them. You know, I'm just saying, don't feel compelled to eat them. Just you know, if you like them, eat them. Totally good. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And um, that'll that'll also save some people hopefully from buying like really expensive um, oil supplements. Mm-hmm like the cold press frozen fish oil supplement because you just got to get your omega threes up as much as you possibly can. Like I really don't see those things as necessary. Yeah. And Martine asks what meat besides liver will help with iron deficiency. So all red meat will help with iron deficiency. Doesn't mm-hmm. matter. You know, don't. And let's go back to our little list here of, um, foods. Sorry, Ariane, I covered your face. Anything in the red meat category is going to work for you. So it's going to be beef, lamb, goat, venison, bison. Um, any other red meat that people commonly get to eat? Uh, you said lamb, venison, bison. Elk, maybe? Sure. So all <laughs> of those. Yeah. Yeah. Any grazing animal. Oh, did you say goat? Animal. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And if you have... Um, you know, poultry and you eat the dark meat, that's got a little more, but you're really going to do best with any of the red meats. So I would do that. You can also have liver if you like, but, um, any of the red meats and, uh, cook in a cast iron pan, you know, that's iron and you do absorb some of it. So that could be helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Mia says, uh, uh, a hundred percent on the omega three comments. And, um, yeah, pandemic carnivore says all red meat is a good source. Um, yep. yeah. So, um, so, and Mia says, uh, let's also keep in mind that the need for omega three is likely experimented with those on a sad diet. So if you're carnivore, who knows exactly, you know, a lot of these questions about how much, 
we need to have of any of these vitamins and nutrients is, you know, all of that is based off of, first of all, a sad diet, but also, um, you know, a lot of that stuff was, you know, figured out in, um, or postulated in the beginning of last century. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know how that relates to a person of today and our needs today. So, yeah. Um, let's see. And uh, the pandemic carnivore asked, should I have been on tonight? I don't know, <laughs> but we miss you. We miss you. So as soon as you're ready, yeah. um, everyone, um, you know, we're, we're trying to give everybody, uh, we're trying to give pandemic carnivore uh, a much needed rest. So, um, you know, but hopefully she will be back soon and raring to go. But um, yeah, mm -hmm. we, we love having her on. Uh, let's see. Tito asks about salmon roe. Excellent. Yummy, tasty. Knock yourself out. Yeah. Mm hmm. And, and I also about think trout roe. Yummy, tasty. I don't, I'm sure it's A1 for you as far as um, vitamins and minerals, uh, how it tastes. I don't know. And I also think that um, listening to your body is important. Like, it's almost kind of like rule number, it's in the top three rules for me. Um, you're going to know when you feel like, oh, that salmon roe just is calling me today. Then that's when you go eat some. If the fat is calling you more than the protein, then that's when you have fattier meat. Like, it may be that, oh, I need these omega-3s and I want to get straight to them. So that's a day that you want some fish or uh, just the straight up sardines in a can or the salmon roe. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great point, too, is that what you desire is going to change from one day to the next. And yeah. um, so, you know, I know that when we're dieting in, you know, the regular high carb, low calorie way, you know, you decide, OK, I'm eating twelve hundred calories and this is what's going to happen. And this is how I'm going to do it. But you, you can't do that this way. You have to just eat what your body wants and it's going to have different needs from day to day based off of what you've done and you know and what happened that day and all the various things so you got to be dynamic um yeah and carnivore mystic says i feel like the um rda recommendations are kind of arbitrary because everyone's body is different yeah yeah um, mm -hmm. the body is different people are eating different things um for us who are uh black or people of some other like minorities um most of the time those are not most of the time all the time the rdas are based on white people so there's a difference there too mm -hmm. yeah um okay so we have covered a ton a ton of questions we've given you so much information um i really hope that you know you're able to take something from this i would encourage you to let me know if you are interested in doing a um, you know, the, uh, 14 day challenge, uh, later this month, there's a link in the description with a sign up box. So you can just sign up and, and, uh, let me know if you want to do it, uh, depending on how many people sign up, then I will, um, you know, I'll try to do it again and, um, I'll, I'll make it a little more interactive. I think I would start like a private Facebook group for it. And, uh, you know, so everyone can really interact and I could maybe put some video out and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, so let me know what you want to do and, um, and, you know, let me know how you're doing. You know, I am, um, uh, at black carnivore on Instagram. I, you know, love to see how people are doing. I love to see your success stories. So definitely take, but if you're, if you're going to do this, please take some pictures and measurements. And yes. then, um, it, you know, at the beginning, you may not want to do it now, but later on, you are going to kick yourself for not having done it because you won't have those amazing pictures showing all the progress. So please do that. And then, you know, let's, uh, let's really, you know, see what we can do. See, see the progress we can make. Yeah. Don't be like me. I wish I had taken more pictures in the beginning, mm -hmm. but I do. I have a picture I'm plotting on. I found it in my Instagram the other day. I just, I got to recreate it. Yeah. And I think the difference is going to be huge. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 
And uh, thank you, Pandemic Carnivore. Don't forget, Dr. Tanya Cole is here on Tuesday, September 8th at uh, 7 o'clock. And that's going to be a great, great conversation. Danny Love signed up. Thank you so much. I totally appreciate that. And, and took pics. Oh, okay. Awesome. Nice. Oh, nice. Okay. Awesome. So, uh, all right. So we are going to wrap it up, everybody. Thank you for being here for so long. Um, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and the little bell icon so that you can uh, make sure to get notification every time we go live. And um, we will see you on Thursday. Very much looking forward to having a lively discussion. And um, we'll go from there. All right. All right, guys. So we will see you next time. All right. Bye. Bye.